Hi and welcome to my point of view. Okay, I want to talk about um, <clears throat> how Labour are planning on saving the NHS. Um, if we go back in history, I believe that um, Labour are going down the same route as Tony Blair did. Yeah. And the reason that I say this is because back in 1997, the last time Labour was in power um, under Tony Blair, he told the voters that he had 24 hours to save the NHS. OK, like um, Labour Party are doing now, he is blaming the Conservative Party for everything, for everything. But what he's forgetting is that um, the damage that Labour Party did the last time that they were in power from 1997, the damage that that party did to the NHS has taken its toll on the NHS and it's been extremely, extremely difficult to improve a structure that was absolutely broken. And personally, I can speak honestly about it because I am an ex um, NHS worker. I'm an ex theatre nurse. I know exactly what happened under a Labour government. And believe me, working in the NHS under that Labour government Back in those days, all those years ago, I said, and many of my colleagues said, what the Labour Party are trying to do is to privatise the NHS. And that is what their goal was. They, they used um, the private sector hugely. Um, the private sector was a huge part of their plan. And they paid billions to the private sector to do NHS cases to get their numbers down okay their aim was to reduce England's waiting list by 100,000 and yeah it did actually get done it did actually get achieved however it didn't get achieved to the benefit of the patients. Now, what their focus was on was purely getting numbers down. It wasn't about patient care. It was purely to get those numbers down. End of. They didn't give a monkey's uncle about your Aunt Fanny down the road that needed a heart transplant. They didn't care about Uncle Buck living up in the mountains who needed um, dialysis didn't give a monkey's uncle what they only concerned about was reducing those numbers and it was actually documented at the time by the British Medical Association that the biggest problem with Tony Blair and his Labour Party was the fact that they didn't consult with doctors they didn't ask for advice from the people on the floor, the people that dealt with these cases on a day-to-day -day basis, the people that actually would know the best way to restructure the NHS to ensure that it was working, didn't consult with them at all. They went in with their plan and told people, this is what you're doing. Oops. And you had to follow their legislations to the T, and I swear to God, working in that environment was harsh. It was harsh. It was like a cattle market. It really was like a cattle market. And I've worked in both private sector and NHS. And believe me, when I worked in the private sector, it was a cattle market. When you go for surgery within... Um, the private sector you are paying extra for the hotel services you are paying to skip that nhs waiting list because the majority of the doctors in the private sector 
are working in the private sector on their afternoon off from the NHS. A lot of the nurses that work in the private sector come over from the NHS. And one thing that I will say is that the private hospital that I worked in in Bolton, I was the only anaesthetic person there that could do anaesthetics, scrub and recovery. And I had to be on call every single night for two years because there was no one else to do it. And on that night, I got paid £10 extra. That was it. That was my on-call rate. And the longest shift that I had to do was an 18-hour surgical day. So I had to scrub for 18 hours, do surgery for 18 hours with eight, half an hour break to have some lunch. I didn't have any dinner, didn't have any breakfast, didn't even have a cup of tea. And I had to go for a tinkle in between cases. That was it. 18 hours, then I had to be on call. So I, and then I had to go back the following day and do another 12 hours. So this is how they're working people. And they wonder why people are leaving the healthcare profession. Okay, now the um, now the consultants within the British uh, Medical Association did document that at the time the um, the trouble with the procedures that Labour were imposing, they were imposing these targets purely, like I said before, purely for numbers. They. The doctors on this medical association um, committee actually said that it was interfering with clinical judgment, which means patient care was significantly reduced. And that is my concern with what is happening now. Now, I will also say back in under Labour again, back in 2005, 2006, a third of the NHS trusts actually failed to be able to balance their books under this Labour government because of everything that they were imposing. So it left a deficit within the NHS of 500 million. Huge numbers, huge numbers. Now, like I said before, I feel like Starmer is heading down the same impractical management um, route as Tony Blair because the unrealistic um, pay rises for doctors is absolutely ludicrous because no concerns for future um, budgets has been thought of it's not been taken into consideration because how how the pay scales work is a nurse or a doctor or whoever goes in at the basic level and each year you get a natural increment so that increment goes up and up and up naturally every single year until you get to the next pay scale okay so once you hit that certain level then you have to apply for a promotion to get onto the next pay scale however like I said each person gets a natural progression in pay so what Labour have not taken into consideration is the fact that these doctors are going to have to have more money every single year and that is going to have a huge effect on quality of care waiting lists failure to replace um, broken equipment and so on so Labour is going to bankrupt the NHS even more than the Conservatives did. Now, if you can follow me, like me, I'd really appreciate your support, guys. Take care.